up. Nobody gets hurt. As long as you let up. Do my thing with an 89 swing. It's versus Don't today, so I thought we'd sneak up on you. Seven o'clock. Maniac, the uptown brainiac in full effect. MC like is back. And better than before, as if that was possible. My competition, you'll find them in the hospital. Visiting time, I think it's on a Sunday. But notice, they only get one day to shine. The rest of the week is mine. And I'll blind you with the science that the others have yet to find. So come along and I'll lead you the right way. Clap your hands to the words I say. Come on. It's a fly though, aren't you? The biggest show in the game. The rock. A much finer boxer. The rock. Revolt TV. 10 p.m. every Tuesday. Throwback Thursday was good, y'all. Well, well, well. Versus tonight. Young Kylo, what's up, Young Kylo? Lisa Brown. Stay in there doing your thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, baby, get my job out here. He's a rock. What's good is the big, 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 The light, the light. We've been preaching the light. God, family, trust, health, wealth, the light. Light as a rock. We've been talking about the, the light. So we, and so we give you the light. Every chance we can get. I'll figure this one out. It's the boy, it's his, um, yeah. What do you mean, Yeah, what is it? Let me see. Yeah, it's, oh, it's going to go down. Let me see that. Let see L-Y-C-E. Find it though. Try to find it right here. Let me see right here. You can get find it right there. That's, that's what I look at. It ain't coming up. That's the weirdest thing, right? I got a very important guest. I got a very important guest today. Uh, you already know. If y'all see MC Light in the comments, let me know. It's the biggest show in the game. We do not play games. I'm trying to get on a request. Can't do it. We got a versus, so we racing against time. My sisters are going at it. Keisha Cole, Ashanti. I am conflicted. I am in the middle. Y'all fancy. I am in the middle. And so, I'm not trying to pick a side. I love them both. And I love both their music. And it's going to be amazing tonight. Who y'all got? Who y'all got? Ashanti, who y'all got? Who y'all got? Ashante? Who y'all got? Who you, who you got? Keisha Cole? Who y'all got? Let 
Makes no sense. Beautiful Molly. Molly's so gorgeous, man. Damn, man. Giancarlo was good. Kenny Burns was good. I know you bugging out. I'm doing whatever you tell me anyway. Dre, like you gotta stop. I love you too. I love you. Can you give me a soda pop or something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo. So we oh you got a shanti. Um Damn, they going to Shanti. Keisha definitely in there too. It's about to go down. Keisha got more music. It's, we gonna see they both legends in their own right. <laughs> Sean Carlos said he's bipartisan. Let him go in there and watch him with his popcorn. Matter of fact, I gotta make some popcorn. I gotta tell Nicole to get us some popcorn. I gotta tell Nicole to get us some popcorn. Your MC Light, if you tuned in, say something. Go in the comments. For some reason, I can't request you. It's the weirdest thing. Guys, my army. Rasha Belhasid. I made a soundtrack for the Big Big Show. We released a single yesterday, rather today. It's called Sunshine the Light. We hope it's gonna do big, big things. I call myself the big poppy of music because every time I bat up, I'm trying to hit him out the park. If I do not hit him out the park, I did not do my job. So when you got other rappers that make music and they try to act like they just making music and they don't want, no, I want hits. In the humblest of ways. Shout out my brother Steve Stone uh, from the Miami Heat. The man took care of us today. We went to that Heat Arena, social distancing. You know me and Khaled, we got that big, big rematch, that game going down the 25th on OnlyFans. And that's just the kickoff because everybody wanted to see that, but we really, really spread knowledge, giving game, motivation, lifting you up, picking you up, letting you know everything we know about how to get the fucking bag. And trust me, <laughs> we get to the bag. It's the weirdest thing. I'm trying to like, can't find MC Light. I can't find him. I am the light. Can't find her. Are you on live right now? Yeah, I'm on live. I'm on live. We on live all the time. I'll tell you the verses. It is what it is. You know, Donald Trump, he up out of here. And so with your mayor was good. So we had to make a theme song. So good night. High five. High five. Good night. High five. I love you. I'm a hugsito, hugsito. No, 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 no. I'm tired. I'm tired. Señora, necesita esa dirección. Okay, después, please. Okay, pero vení guapa mí, okay. Gracias, señora. Gracias. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, yeah, I want you to not only stream Sunshine the Light, I want y'all all, like an army, to repost the artwork or the video clips or whatever. I need you guys. I've been with you the whole COVID. I need that shit when this is over to just go everywhere and show my power. Plus, God is good. And we're doing great things. Espanol, your man Giancarlo is in on here. Me and Giancarlo about to get some money. Um, you know, Giancarlo does the novelas. He just did a movie with Kevin Hart. My mother knows who he is. Your mom knows. Everybody knows Giancarlo. He's part of the Rewind family. Watch I try to tell you. Time. time after time. Oh my God. <laughs> He's part of the Rewind family. No, let me see again, man. I'm try I try to get the people something special. 
She hit me earlier. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. She hit me earlier like she ready. See the guns and the knives on. Ah, there's the knives on the microphone. microphone. Let me go back there and get, find that, find that self-destruction. Or I cram to understand. She body done. So we could just, you know what I'm saying? Get this shit ready. And so. D-Nice produced that too, man. D-Nice produced that one? D-Nice produced self-destruction. <laughs> D-Nice. He's 18 years old when he did that. You know, D-Nice is, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to fuck up the shit or nothing, but you know, he's B-X. I know everybody loves them and accepts them as their own because D-Nice is like the DJ everybody loves. But don't get it fucked up. He's from the BX. He rapped on the song too. They call me D-Nice. He had a hit record to yeah. lean back. Um, yeah. Shout out to Amorphous. I told y'all that story. I don't know if y'all saw uh, the young man inspired us. He was mashing up. He was DJing. And we seen it, we thought it was so dope, and Dre was like, yo, I'm about to take this DJ thing I seen and turn it into a real record. And so we contacted the kid, did business with him, it's sad. They don't have no money. brought him in, uh, gave him that look with us, he's breaking bread. We got nothing but love for Amorphous, the youth coming through with the inspiration. Um, and so that big, big show, yeah, I'm looking at, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit MC Light. We're like, yo, MC Light, Fat Joe looking for you. MC L Y T E. Light as a rock. Press ready to party. Yo, DJ Head, I see you breaking that shit in LA. DJ Head, I see you breaking that record in LA. We need a self-destruction. We need a self-destruction. West Coast had that we all in the same game. They did their version of self-destruction. Had iced tea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all in the same game. We all game. in the same game. That was really dope, too. Yeah, it was hard. Um, and so. Head was showing mad love. DJ Head. Showing mad love. Shout out to my brother Fuzzy. Fuzzy's out here. I've been working, breaking the record, doing all type of Zooms and interviews. And, I got to get with my brother Fuzzy. He's Keep out here. So you can see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just been working and working and working. And, and I don't want him to think I'm playing. Pat Post. That new single's on fire. Wow. Yep, Pat. <laughs> yep, Pat. Let me tell you. They know we cheating. When you big me up, they know you cheating. I'm cheating. <laughs> they rather take it from a stranger than a motherfucking nice rap. You know, they know we family. You my brother, man. You know what I'm saying? But I accept that. I accept that. Yeah, that's crazy that. Somebody said I'm the Hulk Hogan of the rap game. I ain't gonna lie to you. I reached out to Hulk Hogan to get him on the show. Hulk Hogan, my man. Hulk Hogan's my man. No bullshit. Talking about Hulk Hogan, man. Why the Tiger King got dressed up ready to go? Damn, man. They did the Tiger King. <laughs> Let me tell you something. First of all, <laughs> shout out Donald Trump. Shout out Donald Trump. Let's not. You see, this is the only problem I got, right? We know Donald Trump did a lot of fuck shit in the universe. But the man did some dope shit. Parted in Lil Wayne, my fucking brother. Don't care who likes it. It's to the death with me and Lil Wayne. That's my brother. And Kodak Black. 
Kwame Kilpatrick. Now, I know that, that dude out of Detroit, he was doing a lot of things to mayor. Now, that motherfucker was guilty, guys. Like, I, I remember being in Detroit watching the news. I didn't know what the fuck that nigga was doing, but he kept it 100 with that, right? And so on the way out, he gave some great pardons. And, um, but why Trump ain't look out for the Tiger King? No, I fuck with the, I fuck with the, they jammed him up. Tiger King ain't do all that. Tiger King had a limo waiting on him. There. Tiger King had a limo a mile long. You cannot celebrate your blessings ahead of time. That's a fact. Niggas had the jail, or the, the drone shot of jail with the Tiger King had a limo down the block with the door open. He really thought he was coming home. I wish he would have came home. We could use a new series on Netflix. Just something Yo, Fuzzy, we love you, man. Death Row Records. <laughs> yeah, yo. Come here, let me see your Fuzzy. Say what's up to the world, Fuzz. I've been doing the Fat Joe show because it's verses tonight. So we live, Fuzz. Yo, Fuzz, Death Row Records. Damn, man. The West Coast is in the house. We love you, Fuzz. I call you after this. My brother. Love you. Yo, it's my brother Fuzzy from the West Coast. Y'all know what it is. I cannot. Uh, you my, my cousin's from the. No, I mean, and I know what I'm doing pretty much right now. So I know. I don't understand how she's like a war. Pup dog. This shit don't make no sense, man. Shit don't make no sense. Shit don't make no sense. And I try to, I try to give y'all an exclusive, you know? Bring up MC Light. But she, she family, something must be wrong. She will be here. Y'all had. Yo, we got Y'all had, man, Trump. Trump looked out. He ain't <laughs> let the Tiger King out, though. You want to go right into the bullshit, huh? No, no, nah, nah, not the bullshit. I mean, like, yo, I fuck with the Tiger King. I don't fuck with Carol Baskin, man. Hey, listen, bro. I think I want everybody that's that's locked up to come home, to be honest. Well, except except the motherfucker. It's a couple motherfuckers that I know deserve to be in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, it's some motherfuckers deserve it. You know, it's sad, right? Because when a motherfucker deserve it, you know, you don't speak on it. But you're like, damn, I'm glad that motherfucker ain't out here killing nobody else. Hey, I learned that from my OG homie. He used to tell me when I was little, when I was younger, he was like, hey, he was like, listen, cuz, stop saying free so-and-so because so-and-so did that shit and it was fucked up. No, so, so-and-so will kill your moms at the gas station. Word. It was like, you see, hey, y'all trying, y'all trying. What's good, family? What you already know the street that the voice of L.A. right now. What's up, hey, yo, Ed, man, I see you going crazy on that new single out there in L.A. Hey, Joe, listen, I saw this. I just wanted to tell you, though, I told you, I was talking to Dre earlier. We was texting, and I was telling him I just wanted to talk to you because I saw you on with Big, and I appreciate the words. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't oh, get a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I get, I know I get a lot of being an asshole, but when I, I, when I get the blessings, I appreciate it even more. My brother, we, we won the hip-hop nation, bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. We one family, one alma mater. They make you think we don't love each other. We love each other. That's, that's what this whole shit is about. We love each other. That being said, I would tell you if your baby was ugly, like Big was saying. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Believe, right. Listen. Yo, believe. you know who do that? My man Rich be like, yo, why that girl posting up a baby? I'm like, yo, chill. But fuck listen. wrong with you, Rich? Like, that's all the babies are beautiful. So you so so if somebody has an ugly baby, you'll tell them like, yo, that baby ugly. If if you ask me, yeah, I'll tell you for sure. But <laughs> but listen no, listen no, crack, listen. That's when, foul, man. When I was in Miami, uh I went to the, I went to the spot and, and, and Dre was and they was playing me a bunch of shit. And I was telling them the truth, like, oh, this is cool, I don't fuck with this, whatever. That record, bro, sunshine. That shit feel different, bro. Like it just feel good. I was telling my 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 partner Chuck Dizzle last night, like when I was playing this shit on the radio, 
right when we went in the commercials, I went in the room. I'm like, yo, that shit felt good. Like, I would tell you if it wasn't it, Joe. I would tell you. I swear I to God. I know, but the thing is, everybody been down and out because of the COVID, and it's been dark, and nobody, if you if you following the rules, you can't leave the house. And so I wanted to make something to uplift the people, to get them on that new, it's 2021. Let's go positive from here. I know t in LA, man, I know that COVID fucking everybody up. Like everybody I follow is every day is like, rest in peace, such and such. Rest in peace, such and such. Rest yep. in peace, such and such. And it's like, is this COVID is too real. You know it's what I'm real. saying? It's too real. So I try to make a record to make everybody forget the COVID. I think I think we're gonna be straight though. You know what I'm saying? Like I think with us taking this shit more serious, the science being in play, I think that the record is probably gonna hit right on time when when shit when shit start to get a little better for everybody. Oh, right no, on this time. This shit out of here, man. From your mouth to right God's ears, this shit out of here. I'm not playing with these people, man. Keep playing that shit, hey. Don't <laughs> y'all listen, y'all hey. We try to do. <laughs> we gonna keep it the light. We gonna keep it the light. Let me tell you something. We trying to do the impossible. Know what I'm saying? We trying to do the impossible. We out here. I've been doing this. So basically, when Fat Joe drop a record like this, with all love, and you know, in New York, we say respectfully. Uh, uh, I do it for my generation. I love to make good music, but my generation. And it's almost like, when you see the movies when the white guys came to take over America and they fighting the Indians, yeah. my dude, we like the last trial. Like, I watched the movies where they got a guy like named Crazy Horse and he's shooting spears at, the, they got cannons and machine guns and he's just rush and them Indians rush him with the spears and the axe. Like, that's how we come. I know there's some young boys who hear them hits from Fat Joe and be like, there you go again, damn. Him motherfucker won't stay down. He ain't staying down. And yo, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to keep bringing good music, good vibes, good energy. You know, I, I, talk, I was talking to, um, I think I was talking to 40 about you one time. And I look at y'all, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I told, I told him, like, I look at y'all as similar. Like, I do y too. Y'all got fans. Y'all got fans that are 50 and 15 right now. Yeah. I feel yeah. like, so I feel like, you know, and y'all stay in the game. We we call it, me and Glasses was talking one day, we call it staying in the game. You know, you just got to keep enough money to stay in the dice game. And so I feel like you keep rolling, it, and you roll. Well, you know my slogan, the Fat Joe, the Flat Joe slogan is, you got to you gotta stay in the game. You never know. That's my slogan. Like right. Fat Joe says, you got to stay in the game. You never know. Yeah. And so... So when Dr. Dre, God bless Dr. Dre, you know, we got the skin with the brain aneurysm. Um, but when Dr. Dre lost death row, he went and discovered 50 Cent and Eminem. He might have made 50 million from that. Anybody would have been like, wow, he got his money back up. But he ain't stopped there. He kept going, and then he caught the headphones. Right. If you would have asked Dr. Dre in the NWA days, He's going to sell headphones for a billion dollars. He could fuck no, he wouldn't know. But he nah. stood in the game. You never they know. Never know. I fuck with that. I like that. Hey, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to run with that, and I'm not going to give you no credit for it. And as a real nigga. <laughs> Yo, Ed, you crazy. I'm looking for MC Light. Love you, my brother. Stay safe. All right, all right. For sure. I'll talk to you in a minute. All right, one love, head. You don't know who I know. I'm West Coast Connected. Shout out to Fuzzy. DJ Head, the voice of LA right now, on them ones and twos. It's simple as it is that. And let me tell you something. We got a big, big versus, big, big versus tonight. And you know, I love both these girls. Like, they my sister. Um, and and it, it, it's fucked up, you know. It ain't go down smooth because, you know, it ain't her fault, but Ashanti caught the COVID. And so then, and then something else happened. So now I heard some people say they over it, but that's not true. As soon as that verses come on, you're going to see them numbers go up because they fire. 
DJ Khaled is in the comments. Hold up, this guy here, he's hyped today. He is hyped today. I'm telling you, he's at a rare, what, what was that group out of DC? Rare Essence, Rare Essence. He's on a rare essence. Michael Mad, what's good? Let's see, let's see. Let's see. All right, he's not that crazy. He's not that crazy. I can't pick nobody. I'm going to be honest with you. I know it's a celebration of life. I can't, I can't pick nobody. It's simple as that. And then you stay in the game, you never know. So let me tell you, since I dropped the single, everybody you could think of, everybody you could think of, everybody you could think of has hit me up. Thank God. It's, you got one. You got one, Joe. You got. I'm talking about the biggest artists in the world. Biggest DJs, biggest, you got one, Joe. You got one. And um, from their mouth to God's ears, the light, Billy, and our uh, Billy Blanco. Shout out my brother, Weechi, uh, the whole Willis Lynch Mall, uh, my man, Tone, uh, rest in peace, Perk. Uh, good friends of mine, I used to be. To be with them back in the day, family. Uh, I said something in the beginning of COVID, they was throwing this party called Secret Society. Ted Smooth was DJing there. And um, and I told them I was going to perform when this COVID shit is over. So come summertime, if Secret Society throw one of them parties, I'm coming to rip the shit down and rap for like an hour straight. Free, middle of the street. DJ Tony Touch. <clears throat> How you doing, my brother? DJ Tony Touch, AKA the Toka Man. <laughs> Tony Touch in this motherfucker. And let me tell you something, today I got a great text from my brother showbiz born lord he said the record is crazy now showbiz is few words and definitely fewer texts and so when that came through i felt like wow i might really have something touch i need you to play that tony touch i need you to play that talk i eat philly in the building um the mayor in the building and so, what the fuck I was talking about? Because, you know, MC Life was supposed to come on Throwback Thursday. And, uh, and but I've been working, guys. I mean, we shot a video for like 18 hours, right? And by the way, we pay for our own videos. We pay for everything. Like, I hope you understand that. We independent. We own our own shit. Shout out to Empire Records. The distribution, my brother Nima, Gazi, Molangi, everybody that works on the team, Suchik. But, you know, we independent. The buck stops here. So we shoot a video 18 hours. While we're shooting it, we got poor Ivan Barrios. Right after 18 hours of shooting the video, editing. Fucking video was done in one day. Puff just called me on FaceTime. I was like, yo, how the fuck y'all got that out there that fast? I don't know. You know, Khaled is crazy. But somehow it really works. He knows what the fuck he's doing. Yo, this shit got me out there. Let's go. And we just did it. Um, and so, man, thank you, everybody, who played a part in this uh, song. The album is the soundtrack to the big, big show. Fire. Everything make you feel good. Everything give you that big boy, that rich vibe. When you listen to it, you feel like you in an experience. Like you technically in an experience. That's that type of shit I'm giving you. 
As a Ryan Malone, Cartagena, if you're watching, I love you. I love you. Yo, man, you got to come down to Miami so you can talk shit at the, at the end of one of these songs. You got to come down. Pristine Jewelers in the building. Thank you, Pristine. Yo, Pristine, bought that new chain with that new piece as part of the, the experience. I know I snuck. I know I told you the video will be like in two, three weeks, and the next thing you know, you blinked and we shot the video. But that new chain that's part of the light, the sunshine, I need the chain in peace ASAP. I need you to breathe on them. Because you my brothers, you my family. This ain't no, I'm not a customer. Although I am a customer. Shout out to Pristine for always holding me down. Through thick and thin. Good times, bad times. The Ridingers, Lauren, JR, my family. Thank you. Andrew Weissman, thank you. Market America. You're an entrepreneur. You want to own your own business, but ain't got much dough, but you serious about it. And you want to follow a system. Go look up Team Fat Joe, Market America. Um, yeah, they not sleeping. Pristine said they not sleeping. They putting diamonds in as we speak. You know what I'm saying? Your memes was good. And so you see that video. If y'all ain't see that video, you go on YouTube. Sunshine the light, you see me with all that silk shit on, all that Hermes. That's Hermes silk shit. Shout out my stylist to Relish. Puff Daddy hit me up. He was coming to the video. He said, Yo, what are we doing? What are we wearing? I said, Nothing but silks. And so I got a big, big game going down with DJ Khaled and OnlyFans. I know everybody been making fun. We was number one trending. Me and Khaled. They like, yo, is Joe gonna rub his back with all you? Is it, you know, all the funny games, all the jokes. Cause I take it that a lot of people got. Heat makers was good. Awesome is. A lot of people got. Shout out to my brother, uh, Fred, the godson. They naming the street after him February 22nd. I told the family and his wife, I am flying up for that. I have not left Miami in 10 months other than ATL. I had to go do the Wild Cherry Pepsi came right back. But I'm going up there, and I know my brother Fred is smiling on us. Because he said, B, my boy got another one. And when you see somebody with so much happiness for you, and just, you know, like my brother Khaled, you see him going crazy to the record, or he wrote on this record, he inspired this record. You know, Khaled's a major part of this record. And so, um, Fred would be like, I know how he be. Yo, B, got another. He'll prep the room up. So if this record came out video, by the time I get in the studio, he'll have awesomeness, the heat makers, everybody hype. Like, yo, I'm telling you, B, and he going to pull up in the color then. Like, you know, <clears throat> Somebody that really, really loves you for real. And I love Fred the Godson and I miss him. Um, but OG Andy boy, he says the light is his anthem. Thank you for the artwork. OG Andy boy always does our artwork, does a phenomenal job. You know, so this is a group effort. This is a team effort. Uh, shout out to Rihanna for clearing the record. Shout out to uh, Luther Vandross is my favorite, favorite. If you've been watching this show, you know that I put Luther over Michael Jackson. Luther Vandross is my favorite. Fleezy! And, and the fact that I was able to sample his beat and that his estate said, a fat joke. We love Fat Joe. And so, same thing happened with uh, Tina Turner when we did Attention, me and Dre. Um, they don't clear, but they heard it was Fat Joe, and they looked out. And I'm not bugging, that's just my opinion. Vocally, 
I don't think there's a human being that ever touched Earth better than Luke Evangelist. My opinion. Spike Lee, I never forget. He made a lot of sense. He said Marvin Gaye. Some people, I think Rick Ross said Teddy Pendergrass. Me, I'm Luther. Always been. And so the fact that I'm able to sample, it reminds me of uh, when I'm in my house and I got the Hector Labo painting. The last joint I did, yes, with Cardi B and Anuel. Mind you, that's about 100 million streams of views and some wild shit. God is great. Um, but I got to use my idol in salsa music. It's Hector Lavo. And so I got the sample with shit. Yes. And being able to sample Luther. Hey, uh, Fleezy Nation said it's Frank Ocean for me. <laughs> Yo, and I'm getting ready to watch this versus. Um, oh, yeah, of course. You know, shout out Jay Brown, the whole Rock Nation family. Shout out to, uh, once again, not clout chasing. Shout out to Bad Girl Riri for showing me love. Um, DJ Amorphous. Boy, that boy's talented. And so, you know, in this industry, there's a lot of blood suckers. There's a lot of people who take advantage of people, raw people, who take advantage of talented people. To this day, I catch people stealing from me. To this day. And I and some would say I'm smart. And I'm a smart businessman. So this, this game is full of a lot of people. The worst ones is not the ones with a gun. The worst one's the one that comes smile at you with a suit on with a bow tie. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> you know, we got inspired by Little Amorphous. He's a DJ. He does the most insane genius mashups. And so I hit him up and told him, yo, I want you a part of the team. I want you to come. Video, I want to get you, take care of you, you know, give you publishing, give you produce credit, everything, because you inspired me. And that's the way I, that's the way I've always dealt with people. And I hope that artists on my level will look at what I did and inspire them to play the game right, to give people the credit they need, um, give them the love. And uh, some people don't get down like that. Tell a Willis Avenue story. This must be a nigga from Willis Avenue. Uh. <clears throat> Most of the stories I can't tell you. <clears throat> what I can tell you is that they're one of the only crews, and I'm not trying to glorify stuff, but they're one of the only crews that all of them got knocked by the feds and nobody told on nobody. It's pretty much uh, amazing. Unfortunately, that's why I tell you, I don't drive without a license. I don't cross in between green. I don't do nothing. I don't drink a beer in public. I'm not trying to go to jail. But now, if you're going to go and hustle, when you get caught, you got to tell on your best friend, your compai, you know, your daughter's godfather, your this, this, that, you know, and most of them do it. People tell on their own mothers. And so, these guys are stand-up guys. These guys took their time, and because they took their time, they're home now. So when, you, when everybody ain't tell, they have to give them like 10 years, 12 years, which is still a whole lot of time. But if somebody would have told, they would have 76 years and 80 years and 90 years. Big difference. Shout out to the attorney. I believe his name is David Cohen who uh, worked on the pardon for Kodak Black. He loves Kodak Black. He came on here last week. Uh, and Lil Wayne. Uh, a lot of people got pardons. God bless. I don't want to see nobody in jail. That's just the way I feel. I ain't going to lie to you. Very rare 
almost impossible that I have seen somebody get locked up where I was like, yo, I'm happy he got locked up or she got locked up. That's not, that's not for me. I believe in, <laughs> anyway, I don't believe in that. I believe in, you know, so when somebody dies or something, you want me to say, uh, you know, when I look at the news and they be like, we want justice, I don't comprehend that, me personally. Justice to me is an eye for an eye. Being honest, you ain't never seeing me, no matter what. And uh, I see B Billy on here screaming out pure energy. This ain't gangster night, uh, Billy. You did all your time. All your guys did your time. Billy, did you have no? Do you have no? That did go MC Light, but she came late as hell. Yo. Yo, like, this is like a speed date now. Not, you know what? I am, so do this again. I am so sorry. Yo, like, this is like a speed date. You know when they be like, all right, no, not him. Gone. <laughs> like, we got like 15 minutes to versus start. Oh, that's why we needed to bump it up. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We can't go against the grain. Like, no, you're right. You know what? I'm going to tell you, I am writing with the team. But, you know, we have a new sitcom coming, and we are in a writing session today. Talk to me about that. I like that. I like okay, inspiration. Well, I like inspiration. Yeah, what are you working on? You're writing for a new sitcom? Yes, absolutely. It's called Partners in Rhyme. And um, we are writing the pilot. Well, the pilot is written. We're just, I'm in here with a bunch of comedians and writers that know how to punch stuff up and make it make it what it needs to be. Bentley Kyle Evans and I got together um, with Harvest, with his studios, Harvest Studios. So we're shooting, we're shooting our sitcom. I think we start shooting in um, bada, 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 March, the end of March. God bless, God bless. And light, man, you made such a transition. So you, you was like, God, he died. Tomboy, gangster rapper. Yes, then you yes. got a little mature. You got sexy on us, and now you the you the. I see your voice. Do you make more money off of your voiceovers now than anything? Because I see your voice come up on BT awards, commercials, like, I, and we know the voice. The minute I hear it, I'm like, oh shit, like, right. Well, you know, I do believe in multiple streams of income. Let me say that. Um, but to me, it's just doing all of the things that I really love. So mm -hmm. I'm getting the chance to, you know, I wanted to do, I wanted to do radio before I wanted to rap. I wanted to act before I wanted to rap. I wanted to do a lot of things before I came into hip hop. And so hip hop just gave me that, you know, that stepping stone to be able to get into other areas and do the things that I really love. You miss, we play your verse of self-destruction. We played, you Are know, you we made the movie. Then I was saying, but listen, like, I knew something was wrong. I thought maybe you were in LA and you were on the mountain, no reception, because I kept trying to get you. I said, light is too professional. Oh, no, you got to call me Wi-Fi. I do live in the mountains. I don't get reception. You got to call me FaceTime audio or FaceTime for real. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And so um, I want to ask you about, Milk and Giz. What 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 was the relationship with Milk and Giz? Well, their dad, Nat Robinson, was my manager, and um, he sat down. He had a really long talk with my mom about me being, you know, sixteen in the business, and he promised her that he would look after me. And so he became kind of a surrogate daddy. He made sure when, as soon as I got off the stage, that I was in my room. As soon as I got off the tour bus, I was in my room. You know, so he didn't allow anything to kind of get in the way of what the mission was. And that was for him to bring me home safe to my mother. And Milk and Giz were his sons. So it just was the first party music family. They, you know, Who they came out first, you or Milk and Giz? Milk and Giz came out first. They had a song called I Like Cherries. And then I don't remember after, that one. Uh -huh, I don't remember. <laughs> after I like cherries, you know, they hit him in the head with top billing, and we just 
price skyrocketed. Right after Top Billing, I dropped that cram to understand you. Ooh. We were everywhere doing everything. Top Billing, you know, Top Billing was it, man. It still is it. Yeah. You know, it's timeless. You know, every we, we call it like forever music. And your mm. music is like that too, where it's, it's forever. Mm -hmm. And um, but that was that that was good to know, man, because I knew y'all had this relationship. Y'all was down with the same crew. Now mm -hmm. I assume I don't know, but from what I see, mm -hmm. you know, for the for the last 20 years, your crew has been Jada Pinkett, Queen mm -hmm. Latifah. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck is that like? Like, for me, you know, Jada Pinkett, Queen Latifah, you know, you, like, it, it's in, it's an insane group of crew to me. Well, you know what's so crazy is, uh, you know, back in the day, we would go to the new... Ladies. What up, I hear you now. Know? It's okay. It's okay, Light, like we hear you. Yeah, no, I don't know what just happened. She's gonna call back. This is the COO, you know, she makes the company run. So I'm only thinking she's calling me about some business here. Um, but in any case, we were out there in, um, in New York doing a new music seminar. It was Mishi Me and MC Peaches and DJ Jazzy Joyce and Queen Latifah and Moni Love. And, you know, we were a crew and we, we were women in hip hop. That was, that was weird. You know, it like, there weren't really a lot of women trying to be MCs. They would, they loved listening to it, but they weren't really trying to be MCs. So when you found like a crew of people, like-minded people who were into music and lyrics and things of that nature, it just made sense, you know, for for us to hang out. And then, you know, Jada, Latifah, Regina King, like, you know, all of the women out here who started 20-something years ago, that's when we met. You know, so to us, it's just like real, genuine friendships where you've known people. You know people like that, you know, like... No, no, I got that, I got yeah. that. I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's your... It's, it's your goal, you know what I'm saying? It's the same way that we look at you and Khaled and Remy and how y'all go back and y'all got strong, you know, strong bonds. Like y'all are like siblings. So it's the same thing. You know, a record that's so relevant is self-destruction. Yes. And even to this day, like I feel like they need a new self-destruction ASAP. That and nice. what was it like? getting on that record and who who invited you on that record uh self-destruction i think it was krs1 you know at the time i had dropped a couple of story raps about some really um important issues that were happening in the community about drugs about you know drug dealers georgie borgie yeah i crammed to understand you i had another song called not with a dealer you know it was a bunch of things that um once, I think, I think Public Enemy, Enemy may have called me first and they said, we want you to be in our video, you know, the Night of the Living Bass Heads and I, we want you to play a newscaster. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> let's, let's that was do that. Legendary. Yo, you guys used to really collaborate back in them days. You know, yeah. I don't mean to cut you off or keep no, that that's going, good. but the dopest shit I ever seen in my life uh -huh. was, uh, Slick Rick, Teenage Love, and Big Daddy Kane, they was going to go at it on the train. I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> yo, Kane. You know, just for the video. But, you know, that shit was like, wow. Right, right. And I remember you played the newscaster in yeah. the Public Enemy video. Yeah, and, and I think it just at that time, you know, KRS-One reached out and was like, we want you to be on this record. And I'm not sure if that's how it happened. It might have been Jive Records that called my record label and said, you know, let's get it together. But um, I was very excited to participate on that record, um, just as I have been for many. He did another one right after that called Heal, which was, which was an important one. And that's the one that Latifah was on as well. So, you know, that was historical. Harmony and a bunch of other uh, 
women were invited to participate. And what you were program. alluding to earlier was there's this stigma mm. or this this thing they got, which is bullshit, right? What, what thing they got? Wait a minute, what stigma? Now, what there's a thing they got in hip hop where they feel like female MCs can't get along, right? Oh. And so they try to put everybody against each other. Mm -hmm. But in your era, you came out, everybody got along, mm -hmm. you moaning everybody. And it's not the case. And I see it all the time when a new girl come in and she went and we like, everybody like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. Is they gonna go at her? Mm -hmm. You know, she's starting to win. It's the same, it, it's always been the same with everybody. For for me, it's been the same way, like, like me being a Spanish rapper, like me being a, a Puerto Rican MC. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, not really now, now, cause I'm like the OG, mm -hmm. but years ago, um, every Spanish, rapper or a Puerto Rican rapper thought they had to diss Fat Joe in order to come up. And we know right. that didn't work well for them. But <laughs> it, it, no, it you're like, you're like, what you doing? A bunch of crazy shit on the screen? What are you, what are you trying to film a sitcom now? <laughs> you're like, you crazy. No, I'm with you on that. But you know what's so crazy? All of it is silly. You know what was a monumental moment is when Remy called up everybody and was like, yo, y'all got to come to the stage. Y'all got to come to Summer Jam. And right there alone, she had about a dozen of us on the stage with her. You know, she That was a homage. magical moment. I was just there, like, amazed. And, and that was the first time Cardi B ever had a big stage. Like, Cardi B was heating up. Yeah. You know, yeah. underground, but she never touched. That's the first time she touched like a summer jam. Woo! And then yes. you had Latifa, you, mm -hmm. who was there? Rage was there. Rage was there. Moni Love was there. Rod Digger was there. Woo! Yeah, it just was, woo! It was, I, I got, I got chills. Yeah, I just caught it again, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. In the house, you know? <laughs> It was one of those times to be remembered, man. It was, it was amazing. It was a great feeling. And it, it was you know big for her too, because she was like, I remember we sat down. First of all, it was mine and her show. Like we were oh, co-headlining. Oh, right, and she right, told right. me, and she told me, this is how this is gonna go. Uh -huh. I'm gonna have all the girls coming. I'm sitting there like a like a spectator. Word. And yeah, and everybody. And then she said, Cardi B. And at the time, Cardi B was was not big. Mm. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. So we, I was like, Cardi B, the girl with the... She was like, I'm telling you, she's going to be big, Cardi mm. B. Mm. And so I'm glad we all agreed. But she, like, took the whole show. Like, I'm like, you know, if we had 25 minutes, it was a 20 minutes Remy, the girls, and Fat Joe had, like, five minutes and shit. Right. But, I we mean, I love it for hip-hop. We I'm appreciate you for uh, sharing <laughs> your time with the queen, with the queen Remy. Let me Yo, tell you how I, much. Listen, I, I got to stop you and tell you how much I love Remy. That is my sister for real. You know, she is so genuine and down to earth and caring, and I'm, I'm so like ecstatic about her life and her her husband and her child, her family, and then the extension of you and having people around her that love and care for her. She's a, she's a tight sister. She is upright. I love her. She's the real deal. Yeah. And she hit yeah. me up. I don't know if you know, I, I, I released a video and a song today. The Light. Um, the Light. Yeah. And she said, and she says, what the fuck you doing making secret songs and secret videos? <laughs> first of all, she put my goddaughter up first. So I can be like, Mama, I love you. God, Papa, I love you. She blows me kisses. Next thing I know is, fuck is these secret videos and secret songs? <laughs> and I'm like, yo, sis, 
And she's just like, yo, you see me smiling, Joe. I'm just so happy for you. Yeah. And she's just like, um, you know, bro. And I was like, look, you know, Spanish people, they say this shit called mal de ojo. Mm. And you know how people wear the jewelry that they got the little eye there? Yeah, yeah. they yeah. say like bad. The all so it was, I, right. mm. it was such a big thing for me that I didn't want to tell nobody. Okay. Because, you know, when you... You know, Rihanna on a, on a, on the hook, Rihanna vocals and all that. Mm. All I needed was one person somewhere to be like, yo, I ain't really feeling that. And then right. the debate starts. Yes. I didn't want to debate. Right. Like, I wanted it. She gave us her blessings. Yep. And then I was like this. Right. Until the time. Until the time. Yeah. Boss style, everybody be happy for me. You know, but I didn't want to get into the the back and forth. Somebody talking about, yo, I don't know, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah. yo, sis. So I didn't even know. And then once we got the clearance, we just shot the video. We was like, yo, yeah. shoot the video. Right, Let's go. Right, right. Shout out to Ivan Barrios. Um, like LL Cool J, right? Oh, uh, we're going to talk about this damn stop the violence, self-destruction shit. What? What are you talking about? I don't know. Finish the sentence. Let me hear it. I don't really know. What are you talking about? Let's see. What you talking about? So what I'm talking about is all I was going to ask you is, <laughs> was like, was you ever influenced by LL Cool J? Because me as a, a, a studier of styles, I always thought he influenced you. I don't oh. know what the question was. It, you it, know what? No, I'm, is I'm, there I'm some a... tea I don't know about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, no. First, let me answer that. Um, I love LL Cool J. Like, growing up, watching him do his thing. I think I had a poster of him on my wall. And aside from that, he's like a big bro to me. But really, my influence was salt and pepper. Like, I said mm. salt and pepper, salt and pepper, salt and pepper. Like... Uh, uh, like I could recite all of their lyrics. Matter of fact, I practiced their lyrics in the mirror to get my, you know, my chops up. So I give all respect due to them. Now, what could have happened is perhaps they were influenced by LL. And so, oh. you know, this thing that comes down. So you heard this before that maybe LL influenced you? Never. No, for me. For me, yeah, right. I asked Bow Wow the same thing because there's certain cadence that you do, certain flows uh -huh. uh, that I've always was like, yo, I know she's an LL fan because you know that's my idol. Is that so, right? uh, that's, that's interesting that you would say that, and it's possible because I love him, so it's possible that it could have just been in, embedded in me, and then when it came out, but I I know that Salt and Pepper like. I can listen to my stuff all day and hear bits and pieces. Man, of I have a crush on every one of them. And I know my wife's watching, so I don't want no smoke. Yeah, but yeah, nothing I mean, else. Don't say nothing The else. DJ, everybody. Everybody right. everybody was on Fat Joe's radar when it was Joey from the block. I was like, Joey oh, from the God, block. these girls are like. You, you know what I just remembered? You and I were about to set the world on fire with New York Undercover. Man. What happened in New York Wait. Undercover? Oh, yeah, remember that? New York I Undercover. That was we were dope. Both star yeah, we were both starring in New York Undercover. And then, you know, ABC didn't pick it up. And then they played around with it. And did you do you know they're about to redo it, though? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's about to redo it, recast it. It's actually going to uh, the young lady that show runs for The Shy is now going to show run that. I'm going to put the verses on it. It's time for the verses. Oh, it's time for no, the no, 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 no. We could, you know, we, we could always, we, we could always do a part two. You know, I could come join you another day. I, can I hold you to that? Like, cause, absolutely. You know, uh, you're iconic. You're a living legend. You're like, you're in the hip hop hall of fame, and we got a lot of shit to talk about. Let's do it. Let's All do positive. It. Everything okay. with me is about the light. Everything's yes, about yes. the light. The light is love. The light is God. The God. I, Congratulations is, on the new single, by the way. Thank you. You know, 
It's the same thing, ageism, right? Yeah. Ageism in hip hop. And many years ago, labels would drop like artists. I remember they was dropping people and guys were like 25 years old and they were going on the old school tour. And I was like, yeah. yo, this guy's 25 years old. What the fuck is he doing? And so we was listening to these record execs tell us that what our worth is, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when Atlantic Records told me, yo, you ain't popping no more. You know, you sold a half a million records. You don't sell two million no more. You mm -hmm. ain't really popping. I said, all right, cool. I went independent. This 14, 15 years ago. Because I thought about it. I said, man, if I make $7 a record, mm. half a million records, I'm making three and a half million. Right. I put out Make It Rain, she sold four million records. Mm -hmm. And so independent. So yeah. I never listened to these people. Right. Right. And, and, and then I always said, this is going to be the generation where we push it to where we do what we want to do. Right. We're not going to let nobody dictate us and tell us what, who's hot, who's not, who's this, that. If I want to make music and I know I can make hit records and I know I can make hot shit, Ain't nobody going to tell me when to stop or when it's not appropriate mm. or when it's not. Because we used to do this joke. I was guilty of it, too. I used to be like, oh, you 40 in rap? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So now if you're an artist, a painter, mm -hmm. you do still you cut painting? your hands off after? Do you stop painting at 40? Right. Or yeah. do you stop playing the fruit? Like, that's yeah. bullshit. It lives Especially in when you. somebody going to give us big coin to do concerts and tours and all that. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just want to be able to be like, when I leave the game, I left it alone because I felt like it. Right. Not because you was forced to push or any of that. And you got, you may, you still got so much life and love and light to give through your music. It's, it's inspirational. And, you know, now with this, with this new coming of age, you know, we have much more, uh, we have a way to impact in a different kind of way once we're older, which is why they don't want us saying too much on a broad level. It's like, no, you're done, because we can't have you teaching too much, you know. We, <laughs> it, it's okay for you to party and everything, but, you know, and, it's, and what they do, which they had successfully done with you for some, some time when you used to say, 40 and they rapping is that they want to split the two so that the younger people don't look to us for answers that they don't look to us for advice or to be led or guided in a proper way man let me or, tell you something these guys must look at me like them, you know they must look at me like the antichrist because i'll be up here every day giving so much fucking game to the people like i'll be up here telling them what it is like i don't give a fuck i don't nobody own me nobody my boss i tell them the truth now, if you accept my fall, my, 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 my faults and my failures as a lesson and you listen to it and you learn and you can move better in your life, that's mm -hmm. what I try to do. Because when I was coming up, nobody was really, really talking to us. Mm -hmm. Like the, the next generation wasn't like, yo, don't do that or whatever the case may be. It would have right. saved me a lot of bail money, a lot of unnecessary people around me. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have been a lot richer. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. and so I look at myself as being transparent, just mm -hmm. transparency, an open book mm -hmm. where people can learn from me. And I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. Y'all know I could turn up. I'm kind of crazy, too. Right. <laughs> but I try to tell them everything mm -hmm. so that they can take that. They can take that and, and use it. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody say versus on. Um, I love okay. you. I love let's, you. Let's reschedule, please, for part two. Absolutely. Thank Why, you, Light. Call me Wi-Fi. Call me Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> All bye right. Bye-bye, Light. Bye bye. Bye. Love you. All right, Joe. Bye-bye. You don't know who I know, and that is MC Light. Yo, Eric B., what's up? Godfather of the show. Listen, guys, I got to go see this versus because violation if my sister Shanti and my sister Keisha Cole's on there, and I ain't on there. Peace, y'all. Number love.